Whether it's the overall quality, the Eurocar styling or the feature-rich packaging, there are a lot of reasons why the Hyundai Elite i20 is as popular as it is. We are talking 10 to 12,000 units a month popular. But even though it's been around since 2014, it's odd that they haven't introduced a proper automatic variant. I mean, sure, it got the old i20's powertrain in between for the pre-facelift model, but that had a 1.4-litre petrol engine, which meant the government went hamteen guna lagan lega. And it came equipped with a 4-speed automatic transmission, which was about as modern as dial-up internet. But now it finally has a dedicated automatic transmission and a CVT at that. And here are five things you need to know about it. But before we carry on, don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell to stay notified. Number 1. Can you identify it as an Elite i20 automatic? Well, yes, and in the interest of keeping the tail clean, you don't get any badging over here. Just one auto badge that's placed on the front right fender. That's it. Number 2. For now, the Elite i20 automatic is available only in two variants, the Magna Executive and the Asta. Unlike the manual Elite i20, you can't have this in the Asta option variant. So even if you get the fully loaded Elite i20 automatic, you miss out on projector headlamps and cornering lamps, 16-inch wheels, a smart key with request sensors, headlamp integrated DRLs, they sit in the bumper in the Asta, push-button start, auto-up driver window, a rear washer and wiper, boot lamp, side and curtain airbags, auto headlamps, isofix child seat mounts and height adjustable front seat belts, among other features. Number 3. The Elite i20 automatic is still only available with a petrol engine. So the brand new 6-step CVT is paired with the same 1.2-litre engine that you get in the manual. It makes the same 83 PS at 6000 RPM and 115 Nm of torque at 4000 RPM. So, number 4. How does the Elite i20 automatic drive? Now, I'll cut straight to the chase. If you are an impatient driver, if you want a car that's going to put a smile on your face, match the tempo of your favourite thrash metal song, this isn't the car to do it. Because even though it's got a brand new transmission, that 1.2-litre Kappa engine is still the same. So it's meant to be a commuter. So if you're looking to push this engine, it's not going to be enjoyable. Push the engine hard and all you're going to get is a lot of noise, but progress on the speedometer won't quite match. The optimum driving range is between 2500 to 4000 RPM, where you have just the right amount of power to drive at city speeds or enjoy a light cruise on the highway. When conditions demand a bit more aggression, the engine is happy to gain revs and fast. But you will have to hold on to higher revs for a while before you see a corresponding change on the speedometer. So when you're driving on inclines, this motor, this powertrain rather, it is going to feel strained. And even when you go out on the highway, it's not going to feel sprightly and you're going to have to plan your overtakes, give yourself a wide berth. In fact, even if you swap over to manual mode and shift down to one of the six preset ratios, it's not really going to help because like I said, beyond 4000 RPM is just noise. So it's best to just take it easy, understand and appreciate that this is a commuter engine and that is where the beauty of this powertrain lies. You see, as a commuter, this engine and transmission marriage works excellently. It's so direct, it's so predictable and so intuitive. In fact, we had driven the Yaris CVT recently and it feels almost as good if not better. Press the throttle ever so slightly and you get the exact amount of acceleration you want. No sudden spike in acceleration to make you swap over to the brake a mere second later. So it gives you no unpleasant surprises, nor does it leave anything to guesswork. And then there's the smoothness of the transmission itself. Under path throttle, it is unbelievably refined and polished because you're not feeling any amount of changes in the ratios. There's no head nod or jerkiness whatsoever. And then the cherry on top has to be this 1.2 litre engine. Now, like I mentioned, it's not the most exciting unit in the world or even its segment for that matter. But when you drive it, you realize how refined it is because even when you slam the throttle down, the revs may make the engine get noisy, but there's zero vibes entering the cabin. And under par throttle or at idle, you can't even tell that it's running. So as a combination, this engine and this transmission, for city commutes, it's brilliant. 
And number five, is the Hyundai Elite i20 automatic a job well done? Well, Hyundai has taken its whole sweet time to give us the Elite i20 automatic we deserve, but that's exactly what this is because the transmission has been tuned perfectly for the engine and it works excellently as an urban commuter. It does have its own flaws, beginning with the fact that you can't have it in the fully loaded Asta option variant. That in our books was a major miss. And that aside, the highway performance, it's simply underwhelming. Even low speed overtakes are going to need a lot of planning. But to be frank, that's the nature of the engine. So you're going to get similar behavior even with the manual. So if all you're looking for is a hassle-free point A to B commuter that will delight but won't really excite, the Elite i20 automatic is a job well done.